Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters, it's me once again, hope you guys are happy to see me on another episode of Ramadan with the Mandan. Now, as you know, it's sponsorship time and today we've got a very special opportunity for you guys to make a bit of cash. So how is it exactly that you can make a little bit of extra cash from the sponsor of today's video? Well, the sponsor of today's video is Progress Learning Centre in Hayes, West London. They teach primary and secondary school students maths, English and science of all levels. So how can you make some money? Don't worry, I'm about to get to it. If you refer someone to the tuition centre and they sign up, you, the referee, the referee, referee, whatever it's called, will get £10. Every single person that you get signed up, £10 into your bank account. And by the way, the centre also runs a free youth club for 13 to 18 year olds every single Saturday at 6pm. Free food, they've got PlayStation, they've got games, everything you could imagine in a nice Islamic environment. So guys, number one, get your money up. If you refer someone, you will get £10 in your bank account. You never know, you might chat to them, they might give you crypto, some Bitcoin or whatnot as well. And uh, number two, make sure that you attend, if you're 13 to 18 year old or you know someone who is, they need a bit of friendship, they need a bit of guidance, please send them over to the free youth club. It's absolutely free it's for them to benefit, inshallah. So without any further ado, let's play a video from Progress Learning Center and then let's get into today's episode. Assalamu alaikum and greetings to you all. I'm happy to announce that our centre is now open for our hardworking and dedicated students. For those of you that don't know, Progress Learning Centre is an Ofsted regulated tuition and childcare centre which take pride in the progress and learning of every child inside and outside of the classroom. With qualified teachers, experienced tutors, hardworking mentors, we work laboriously to make sure every child is making progress. Our students love the centre and they always look forward to coming back. If you wish to enrol, all you need to do is register before the first of the following month so a class can be allocated for your child. With that being said, we look forward to seeing you soon. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, amma ba'ad, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Brothers and sisters, welcome back to another episode of Ramadan with the Mandan. On today's episode, we have a brother who I don't think needs much of an introduction. We have brother Muhammad uh, Abu Elijah, uh, previously known as, do you mind me mentioning it? Uh, Muhammad Abu Elijah. Muhammad Abu Elijah. Yeah, that because was suffice, we, okay. We've got a thing on the show, I, I don't know if you've been keeping up with the show, yeah. where uh, brothers have got nicknames, so we're not for him. No. He dropped his Dawah Man nickname. No, no, no. Just everyone's just dropping a nickname. I don't know if you've seen yeah, it on yeah. Instagram, he changed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've seen it, but I remember you mentioned it when we was in Saudi as well. I mentioned it, but he yeah. never officially did it. Yeah, yeah. But on the uh, show he dropped the name, Strides dropped his name, so we called no. him Now there's a few brothers, so, no, no, no. so we're just... Mentioning it, but if you don't know for yeah. that's fine. We have to mention yeah, I just it. go by Muhammad Abu Elijah now. I heard my new nickname apparently amongst the brothers is Jamaiki. So that's, Jamaiki. What, I, yeah. that's what I do when everyone calls that's me Jamaiki. So. Muhammad Jamaiki. Muhammad, Muhammad Jamaiki. Jamaiki yeah. on the, uh, on Isn't that the name of the Imam at Brixton Mission as well? It's Muhammad Jamaiki. I think it's. I think Sheikh it is. Jamaiki, yeah, yeah. I think it yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's not Muhammad. It's not Muhammad? No, it's, not Muhammad. it's Jamaiki though. Yes, yeah, it's in Jamaiki. I think it's Muhammad Jamaiki, is it? No, it's not Muhammad. It's not Muhammad. It's. The Sheikh from Brixton Mission. May Allah bless him. It's. I mean, Umar, Umar Jamaica. Umar, Umar Jamaica, Umar Jamaica, right? Umar. Umar Jamaica that's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, you could be Muhammad Jamaica. Muhammad Jamaica. <laughs> so. <laughs> Inshallah. So, Inshallah. on today's episode, uh, as always, you know, we start off, and the first thing that we ask is, when was the first time that you ever came into contact with our da'wah in any way, shape, or form? So mm. The first video you ever saw from amongst the videos of our da'wah. No, the first one. I think I remember I weren't practicing. I weren't practicing. And I saw it was Imran. I can't remember what you were talking about. 
but you were serious, Aki. It was mm. something that you were very serious about. You're always quite serious, you know what I mean? Mm. But you were serious about it. I can't remember what it was, but like the, the approach, like you were just animated, you know what I mean? You meant it. And I remember just watching it and kind of just seeing it and being like, like clicking away from it. Because I just weren't in a space to, to mm. see that, you know what I'm saying? And I know we've spoken before about like my kind of journey. And I used to hide from, like even things like Dawa, I'd hide from it. Because yeah. I knew it would like affect my heart in a way that would make me leave what I was doing. Mm. And I didn't want to leave what I was doing. So I remember seeing it and kind of clicking off it and thinking, nah, that's making excuses like, nah, that's too much for me. Dude. Nah, like, I don't want to see that right now. And then I remember seeing like a similar video after I met you. And it just clicked in my head. It was like, alhamdulillah. Because I saw the similar video after I met you, I was in a different space. And I was like eager to, you know, to watch this. And it was affecting me the way that I thought the other one would. But I was happy to kind of let it affect me, if that makes sense. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. What I wanted to ask you is, were you a born Muslim or were you a river? No, a river. I took my shahada at 14. Okay. Yeah, 14. Yeah, yeah. You're from Brixton originally, right? No, Fort and Heath. Fort and Heath, okay. No, no. Random sites. Kinda, like, yeah, kinda. It's all south, but it's like... It makes sense. Because we're, we're basically the same age, right? Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. The same age. That was the time everyone in South was accepted. Yeah, everyone, yeah, yeah. I remember guys uh, were coming to my school. It was normal for 14, 15, 16 year olds to become Muslim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was very normal for them to become Muslim. No, no. Yeah, yeah. But you yeah. actually did it properly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, you know, um, at the time, anyway, at the time, and then obviously I kind of just went in a different direction. Yeah. But Alhamdulillah, so, so Allah brought me back. So, how first saw that video of him being. Um, that weren't that long ago, man. It was about five years ago or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, yeah, about five years ago. About five years ago. Mm. So then, when was the first time after that? As in, did you have any further contact with our Dawah after that? Or no, we met in person. Yeah, we met in person. So, they managed to... So since that... Yeah. So that one video since yeah. that, so that's, else? No, that's why it was even quite a difficult question to answer. Because mm. I was thinking... When, I, when you was leading with the question, I was thinking, when did, maybe when did we meet person. or something? Yeah, we actually we met person. in person. So I remember seeing, but I didn't know, like prior to that, I didn't have in my mind, oh, that's the brother from the video. Okay. But then when I met, when I met you <laughs> afterwards, <laughs> I was like, oh, this is the brother from the video. <laughs> and I was like, oh, he's a cool brother, a calm brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> in the video, like, if I knew, I don't know if I would have turned up. I said, yo, this brother's a bit scary, but... <laughs> But yeah, so yeah, but we met in person. Suleiman introduced us. Yeah, didn't alhamdulillah, it? alhamdulillah. Was that when you did the MXP video? The MXP, mm. yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's when we first. And met, that was yeah. the first time you met in person. Mm. Alhamdulillah, man. And obviously after that, we went on the Umrah trip. No, mashallah. That was very recent. That was on our most recent one, Re- uh, February 2022. No. I, the thing that shocked me about you, Allah, I can't lie, and I think it's just I'm not mentioning, you know, like mm. to like throw dirt in your face, but just as I think it's a benefit, man. Yeah, it's yeah. similar to what we talked about in your story. It's about seizing the opportunity. Mm. Remember the day we landed mm. from the Umrah trip? Yeah. Then we had an event in the Masjid that same day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you live in a very awkward place when it comes to traveling via train compared to here. Compared to here, it's not easy to get to. Mm. So I didn't even expect you to turn up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm bro. The brother was there. And then you just come in lesson after lesson. I asked, he said, ah, well, I just can't let. What was the word you said something along the lines um, of you? I don't know but my thought process is more about momentum in it. Mm. It's momentum, man. Because I've been like I'm in Egypt for example, mm. you know, alhamdulillah, beautiful experience and that was a big difference for me. Because before that I'd I'd been out of the UK before but never for a long period of time like uh-huh. that. And never to like an Islamic country. Uh-huh. So in Egypt was just different, you know. When I came back I started noticing things that were just must have just been hitting my subconscious before that. I didn't even notice about the UK. I was on the motorway one day and I saw billboards. One was basically one billboard was for something haram, the next one was something haram, the third one was something even more haram in a <laughs> row. And I was like, I've never even looked at billboards before. That ne- like it must have just been subconscious. subconscious. Yeah. So I remember coming back from Saudi and saying, look, I need to keep this momentum up. Mm. I need to keep it up because I felt like the Egypt thing, I was at one level when I was there. And then I came back, not like I slipped, but I just weren't as... Same energetic. Yeah, that's, that's energetic, in it? And I didn't want to lose the energy, so I said, you know what, this is the first thing I'm going to do straight away, come up to Masjid for the country. It will be the same brothers I was in Umrah with, mm. doing Umrah with, you know, in Saudi with, shall I say. And yeah, I just wanted to keep the momentum. You know that, and, that, and that's it's also very important for people to process that concept of, um, and you know the Prophet talked about it, he said, إِنَّ لِكُلِّ عَمَلٍ شِرَّةٍ لِكُلِّ شِرَّةٍ فَتْرَةٍ The Prophet said, every time when a person is doing actions, 
He's got energy. The mm. beginning of the action is energy. He's passionate. He's on his dean. Yeah, he just started yeah. practicing. He's seeking knowledge. He's memorizing everything. Even Ramadan. Right. But mm. he could in fatra. But then every time when there's that energy, the energy will eventually kind of burn out. fade. It will burn out. Doesn't it's natural. Mm. It is natural. Iman goes up and down, everything yeah. that goes up has to come down. And then the Prophet doesn't mention Man fatratu ala sunnati faqadihtada. But whoever when he fades out, when he kind of kind of relaxes down and calms down a bit, as long as when he calms down, the point that he lands on is my sunnah, mm. he'll be guided. No. No, okay. But anyone who does it on other than my sunnah, faqad halik. Mm. Faqad halik, okay, maqad, then he's destroyed. Because some people, they calm down, but they calm down on some other stuff. Mm. Yeah, does that make sense? But the thing is, you're not going to calm down on the sunnah of the Prophet unless there's, unless you were... Like some brothers, you see, when, they, when they're studying, or so when they come to the deen, there's no knowledge. No. There's no seeking knowledge. It's just brotherhood, which is good. Yeah. Coming to the masjid and worshipping, which is good. But then when you fade out, there's nothing to hook onto. You're just going to yeah. fall. It's all based on the feeling, isn't it? It's all based and on the feeling. feeling goes for whatever reason, then you, you're not going to have anything. And you can be chasing that feeling for 20, 30 years. No, you never know come. What? Even what you said about like, when, as long as when you fall, you fall onto like the sunnah. SubhanAllah, that was another thought process I had when I came back yeah. because I remember saying like, okay, and it came from something that some one of the brothers said when we was out there as well. And it was just about like doing, not above and beyond, but just not doing the bare minimum. Yeah. So I said to myself, okay, I'm going to set certain targets for myself, right? So if I'm praying, I want to try to pray in the masjid as much as I can. But if I do pray in the house, I'm not allowed to just do the fad. I have to do Sunnah. every sunnah that's attached to that salah. If I'm sure. in the house, Everyone, and the reason I did that is because it's like now if I do fall, I fall onto the fart. Whereas instead of like if I'm only doing the fart, I fall, the it's, fart there's you're, nothing else you're, to you're finished. Do you know what I mean? But you know, the scholars have actually mentioned exactly what you just said. <laughs> no, I didn't know. Mashallah, you're thinking like a scholar. That's actually <laughs> this exa- what you just said is exactly what the scholars mentioned. No, they no. said the fart is like you know, they said the sunnah is like a fortress around your fart. No, if shaitan attacks the, if shaitan attacks the fortress. He didn't attack the fard. No. He fired arrows at your sunnah. Mm. So your sunnah maybe fell, but your fard didn't fall. Almost protected. Yeah. But yeah. if you if your fortress is the fard, if yeah. shaitan that's all day he's just attacking yeah, your fard. Yeah. He's just attacking your obligatory prayer. Big problem, so yeah. then it's gonna make it's gonna make you slip. No. Also, sorry, just to add on. So the other point is though, so now a man's gonna go up and down, right? Mm. He's gonna go up and down, up and down, up and down. As long as when he goes down, he's on a sunnah, he's okay. No. But the point is that he's looking for every opportunity to bring it back up again. Mm-hmm. And that's where you got certain times and certain places Allah legislated for that to happen. Okay. The places is Mecca, Medina, mm-hmm. and Jerusalem. No. Those are places that when you go, your iman increases. Like in in uh, in the awwal abaytin, wudi alil nasi, lalladhi bakkat and warakan, hudalil alamin. Allah said, Mecca, in there is guidance. Like just by being in Mecca, you're guided. Like you, there is guidance in that place. Medina is like that. No. Jerusalem, like these are places specifically. Where, did, where it's like the iman increases, you do more actions, the reward is more. It's times to exert yourself. Mm-hmm. Then it's times, for example, the month of Ramadan, mm-hmm. the 10 days of Hajj, Dhul Hijjah, the month of Muharram, and the, um, generally speaking, the four sacred months. Like these are times for you to exert yourself more. Does that make sense? So that's something that brothers have to, as in, really like, clue onto. Because yeah. it's normal, like, it, it, it's okay, you're, you're gonna maybe dip for a second. Mm-hmm. It can't go below the sunnah though. It can't yeah, be that yeah. man was one day, you know, in a masjid seeking knowledge and next day he's in a girl's lap. That, when that happens, well, like, I, yeah, brothers have to really, man, question themselves. Assalamu alaikum. Sorry, I'm interrupting the podcast again. I know you were probably really enjoying yourself getting into the conversation, but I have something very important to talk to you about. It's only going to take one minute. So please, just listen to me, inshallah ta'ala. Guys, as you know, we do da'wah and this da'wah that we do uh, it's not that watered down stuff It's the stuff that actually really teaches people What the religion is And as you can see it helps people You've been seeing on this Ramadan With the Mandem podcast series That people are actually impacted by these things Now in order to put more content out To reach more people We need a bigger team We need more equipment We need more staff Of course, All of that stuff comes with money So we're fundraising right now this Ramadan To be able to have more funds to be able to produce more so we can reach more people over next year, inshallah ta'ala. So if you guys would like to be a part of this da'wah that we do by contributing at the link below, that 
means that inshallah ta'ala you can participate in the reward of all that comes from this. So click the link below and make a donation ASAP. In fact, make a donation before you go back to watching the rest of the podcast. Assalamu alaikum. I saw Ibn Baz say, you know, why brother asked him, why do people fall off the deen? He said a person fell off the deen after being righteous. He said, I know it for only one of two reasons. Either he looked down at someone that was not practicing and thought he was better than them. Meaning, of course, the one who's practicing is better than the one who's not, right? But he meant it from the angle of like arrogance and pride. Arrogance, but it, you're only better because Allah made you better. Mm. He thought he's better because of something in him. Mm. And look at me, I'm, I'm better than you. He said that, or he wasn't grateful for what? Guidance. For the guidance mm. that he received. Does that make sense? Also, I heard Sheikh Muhammad Isham Tahir say something yesterday. He said, you know, in Ramadan, people, or some people struggle to do righteous deeds. It's only for one of two reasons. He said, either it's because of a sin that you did, and a sin inherits another sin. A sin inherits another sin And then that sin inherits another sin mm. A righteous deed inherits a Righteous, righteous deed, deed yeah. But a sin inherits a sin So he said Now you've done a sin Now you're struggling to get out of that spiral Or you're spending too much time Doing things that are mm-hmm. Permissible mm-hmm. Mubah Like the, we were talking in the previous podcast The Prophet said In the month of Ramadan He wouldn't even eat mm. At all 30 days he would not eat no. Sahaba said Ya Rasulullah You join your prayers So you, oh. join, you, you join your fast Why? It, it wasn't obligatory for him to do that mm. He didn't want to be busied with even drinking mm. from the time he could spend worshipping. So every time when you spend just chilling with the brothers, it's taken away from your time worshipping in this blessed time. Or if a person commits a sin. The point I'm making, I was digressing, mm. is that these are opportunities that we've got to use. So I like the fact that you did that, man. You, no. The Umrah, you seize the opportunity. Then now Ramadan comes into place, seize that opportunity. And I think it's important for people to learn that lesson, man, and, no. and, and, and take that, man. 100%. Yeah. So how's your Ramadan going generally? Yeah, it's good, man. It's nice, it's nice. You know what? This Ramadan's kind of different for me, man. <coughs> because um, every other one, I've thought about food a lot. Okay. Like I've been hungry and thirsty. and Now, it's like I'm busy in myself. You know what I mean? Mashallah. I'm busy in myself. So I don't even think about it. You know what I mean? By the time I break my fast, it's like I'll eat a bit and khalas. So let you know me ask you mean? a question. Are you doing more worship this year? Yeah, yeah, 100%. That's why? Because yeah. you know that same hadith I mentioned mm-hmm. right now, when the Prophet mentioned, when the companion said, Like, you do this, like, yeah, how? Yeah, yeah. The Prophet told them, My Lord feeds me and he gives me drink. No. But he didn't mean by that he gives me physical drink or food, mm. because if that was the case, his fast would be broken. broken yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, what it meant was that it was his ibadah. Mm. Through it, Allah was giving him the strength. And that's why, as we mentioned in the previous podcast, so, Ibn Qayyim, ta'ala, yeah. he would come to Ibn Taymiyyah in the morning and say, Breakfast is ready. Mm. This is outside Ramadan. He would say, Breakfast is ready. Like he would just be sitting there doing worship, dhikr, yeah. just remembering Allah. And he would say, If I don't do this, he goes, I will feel weak. This is my breakfast. Mm. This is my breakfast. Does that make sense? So, like, Allah Azza wa will give you strength through that ibadah. Mm-hmm. So that's a good sign. That means you're doing more this year mm-hmm. than the past. Yeah. Allah accepts it from you. Amen. 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 Yeah. So one thing I wanted to ask is, which we've asked all the previous brothers as well. I thought that with you, it would be slightly different because most of the brothers that we've had that came, they started practicing through the da'wah that, that we're doing. They stayed with it. They went no, through. No. You were kind of like running parallel yourself, mm. and you came into our da'wah. You came into contact with our da'wah later on. You know, mm. start on rather than between the, the, you know, the classes and stuff. So, first question is, this is what I've asked all the other brothers, is what impact, if any, would you say that the da'wah, the the umrah trips, and the matting in the masjid, the classes, the run, all of it, mm. what, what sort of impact would you say that it's had on you as a yeah. person? Yeah, actually, you know? do you know what, yeah, it's, it's funny because, as you say, like, I was kind of running parallel doing my own thing or whatever, yeah. It's like, I don't know if you don't notice this, but whatever you guys are doing, you don't have to be... Like it's so, so much of a like brotherhood unity kind of thing now that like myself you could just jump in late. I feel like I've been. I feel like I was on the first Umrah trip. Like the way brothers treat, the way I'm. Do you know what I mean? I'm involved, and it just feels that way. So it's not even like I don't. I don't feel like even a newcomer to like what you guys are doing. Do you know what and, I mean? And you know why that probably is. You know what you just, what you just said. You know it's actually it's actually deep when you ponder on it. Like for example, when he was in Egypt. He was with our brothers. I was with brothers that was on... But they he, was on the first Umar trip, yeah, right? There was some of them on the first, some yeah. were on the third. Mm. But, that, but that's the point, is that the brothers are so big now, is that brothers will meet the data without even having to ever meet us. Because mm. it's, it's just so big now. Yeah, like, for yeah. a, like, for example... Global movement. Like mm. There's brothers that... The brother, for example... 
Sorry, Abdullahi. Abdullahi. Ibn Jirir Institute. He's meeting with in Egypt regularly. He's yeah. putting them on students. Hum, we're going to memorize Quran through that process, learn Arabic, and then go on to become scholars. Mm-hmm. But that's like I'm saying, it's not even, it's just beautiful. Like it's mm. like, because remember at the beginning, one of the things that used to stress me when I was that I was the only guy. Mm. In the sense where it was, it was it was the only one that everyone's coming to is me. Mm. Like, I can't help everyone. I would love to. I don't have all that time. Yeah, and course. I used to always say, we need more brothers to like, do, you know, take time out. But no, like, no. The thing is, everyone's doing it. Like I, even you was doing it on Umrah trip. Mm. Like with the brothers that were on Umrah, I saw some of the brothers, mm. like you was like being an older brother figure to them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it yeah. trickles down. No. It trickles down, man. So no. that's that's the beauty of it. That it's just getting so big mm. that you could just find the brotherhood now. You can find a brother in Egypt. Mm, yeah. You don't even have to come to Mishra Khan. Yeah. You can find a brother in West London. You can find it in East London. It's like I came in I came into contact with it before I actually, do you know what I mean? Contact. Yeah, like obviously I met you when we done the podcast. Yeah. But it was after that, like on my trip and everything. And even prior to that when we started, you know. Yeah. But I came into contact with it really when I went to Egypt, you know what I mean? Alhamdulillah. So yeah, Alhamdulillah. So I obviously I know you've done a podcast talking about the whole um uh Egypt experience was yeah, freshly yeah, yeah. grounded, right? Mm. But just in case anyone didn't see it, if you could just give us a little synopsis of how that was, because I know a lot of people yeah. really talking about yeah, Egypt. Yeah, do you know Egypt. what? Like, it's almost like, it's, it's, I don't know, maybe from that podcast or something, but it's like I've become this, like, Egypt advice guy. <laughs> like, people just, I see, literally, well, I, I'll be in the masjid and brothers will come up to me, Aki, can I just speak to you a minute? Like, yeah, I want to go to Egypt. <laughs> And I tell them the same thing, just go, man, just go. It's not like it's not that deep. You know, people they want to plan it, they want to mm-hmm. save this amount, and it's not expensive. So you obviously you might need to save something, yeah. but it's not people set their targets too high when it comes <coughs> to saving for Egypt. Yeah. It's not that crazy. Grand, ooh, yeah, you, you for a, a hot months. minute, bro. A, a, a hot minute, Aki. I didn't spend that out there. I was out there for three months. And I didn't spend maybe I spent maybe half of that. Do you know what I mean? Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep Egypt, you just gotta go. Just pack your things, yeah. go. My situation was um, like, Alhamdulillah. My situation was amazing because same brother Abdullah that you're talking yeah. about. When I was planning to go, like me and him, we'd never spoken. Aki, I got a DM, I, but I'd bought. Had I bought my ticket? I think I'd bought my ticket, but I didn't have no plan in it. Uh. So I was just on this like. I remember you messaged go. me. You said yeah. to me, like, "I'm just." I'm yeah, I'm going, I'm, yeah going. I'm, I'm going. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going. So I was gonna go over there and just like whatever, just find somewhere to stay and do my thing in it. And um, I got a DM from Abdullah saying, "Aki, salam alaikum. If you ever feel like coming to Egypt, just let me know. Like I'm out here, I can help you with this and that." Wow. I was like, "Aki, I bought my ticket already." Once, so he messaged you just out of the blue. Out of the blue. Cause you know what the funny thing is, I was supposed to get in touch with him and connect mm. them. Yeah. But I didn't. That was mm. my bad. Apologies, yeah, yeah. by the way. Because I know a couple of times I didn't forgive yeah. me, but I'm very sorry about that. But look at that. He messaged him anyway. Yeah. Oh, just yeah. decreed it to happen. Just decreed it, man. And so he messaged me, if you feel like coming out here, I'm here, I can help you out. Da, 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 da. And I was wow. like, okay, I've bought my ticket already. And he was like, cool, like, Labash, just leave it with me kind of thing. So I went there, stayed with him, like, stayed in an apartment with him, Jabil, Yonis, like, all these brothers. And they kind of made my experience, like, really easy, you know what I mean? Like, with the permission of Allah. But, um, for everyone trying to go there, okay, I'll just say go. There's so many students there mm. from all over the world. Like you're meeting American brothers, like yo, salam alaikum, Aki. You good? <laughs> like, you're meeting like <laughs> Polish <laughs> brothers, Australian brothers from everywhere, everywhere. Like brothers from all over the world. But the beautiful thing is, everyone's here for the same thing. You know, everyone's here to increase in knowledge, increase in iman. You know, and it's that kind of place, isn't it? Sure. Like like every Islamic country, you hear the adhan just out loud you know Inshallah. every salah is in the masjid like it's praying at home and that. It's, that's not even a thing out there do you know what I mean always in the masjid fajr you leave wherever you're staying to go to pray fajr and the streets are just it's like it's midday people but going to the I masjid think, I, I really think people need to deep what you just said you said mm. praying at home is not even a thing it's not there. even a thing out there like for the men it's, yeah. it's, it's not even a thing like, that shows mm. you what's yeah. bad here is that recently I saw a video of someone sent to a group that I'm in of an individual and he was talking about how Taraweeh is better in the UK than it is in the Muslim lands because the Muslim lands they don't, you know, give uh, they don't uh, yeah man give uh, you know importance to the, no they don't give importance to the Quran but they recite very little okay. very short and whatnot yeah. and but like and then the brother who sent it but that's that's the doubt of the Quran Muslim they always trying to Egypt. meet yeah he's he's in Egypt Gulen and he was like bro. Yeah. Uh, 
every single message that I know is finished in the Quran. They were like, no, the Muslim countries they don't finish the Quran. And really? hey, the UK they finish it. Make it say, yeah, he was saying. The UK is better. He was saying, he said, I go to some place they read one two ayat and they and they go into. That's what he said. He said they read one two ayat. And they go into Rukur. Mm. Which, which, uh, but like, Allah, that's some, that's because they've got this concept of you don't want to go back, don't go back to the Muslim world, stay in the Kafir country, build mm. yourself here. And that would destroy people's Iman. Well, I even, like I said, in my country, Pakistan, bro, mm. they will fight you if you don't finish the Quran. As in, the Imam <laughs> yeah. is ne- he's, yeah. he's getting taken down <laughs> if he doesn't finish the Quran. <laughs> that's how they are like, they, they're just. a different level of extreme. I think even, bro, even a country that may not be the most ideal, like, in terms of like Islamic mm. kind of thing, even in Dubai, actually, they finish yeah, the, like, they finish the Quran, Quran yeah. every year, like, they will, they, they, they read a bit less than everyone else, mm. but then they make it up in the last 10 nights. No, no. So, yeah, man, well, like, being in a Muslim country, yeah, the is just different, even that, that praying in the masjid, like I remember when I first came back here, praying at my house, I felt like I was almost like I missed the salah. You know that guilt if you was to miss a salah, uh-huh. I'd pray at home, and I'd be walking around after feeling like ashamed, and I'd be like, "You prayed though," but because I'm not at the masjid, yeah. it was like I'm so used to praying at the masjid mm-hmm. from Egypt. So I'd come home and I might pray doha at home, and I feel like you know you just feel like a bit of a waste, man. Like what am yeah. I doing, like? I missed it, and like, I didn't miss it, but Here I didn't. So I didn't not, go. Not pray. Yeah, yeah. But this is why when I came up from Saudi, I wanted to just be on it because mm-hmm. praying at home after a couple of months of being back became normal again for me. You know. You know exactly. You know the reason why I probably felt like that at the beginning is because you see when you're doing good deeds uh, and when you appreciate the value of a good mm-hmm. deed, when a good deed passes you, you, you just re- you realize you lost the opportunity for reward. No, no. Maybe not consciously, but you feel it. Mm. Like if I, if I was to tell a person, ah, you got opportunity to do this job. At the end of this, you're gonna get X Y Z money. Mm. If he missed that, he would feel sad. Feel gonna, yeah, gonna feel Furthermore, sad. if I if I if, if if we went out with the brothers and we had a laugh mm. and we took videos and pictures and we posted it online in the WhatsApp group, mm. the brothers we didn't make it would feel like they left out. That happened in Saudi a couple of times. <laughs> I was moving lazy, yeah, <laughs> see the brothers out. So, see, so people feel left out. Yeah, yeah. But that's how I mean, the believers when they're doing the ibadah, no. that's how they feel if they missed salah in the masjid course, or yeah, they course. didn't read uh, their push of Quran today or they missed the lesson or they feel like that. And the Salaf would feel like that. They would, they would feel if they missed a recommended action mm. like a kalami and before them. Like yeah. just to mention Imam Muzini. Imam Muzini was Imam Shafi'i, he's one of his greatest students. Mm. One time he missed a Isha prayer in the masjid. So this upset him so bad. So what he did was, and it wasn't right what he did, but obviously he was a scholar of Mujtahid, he'd done his ijtihad. Scholars mentioned after it wasn't right. Mm. We're not looking at whether it was right or wrong, but we're trying to talk about. His angle, yeah, yeah. even though what he did was wrong. He said, okay, each prayer in the masjid is worth 27 the time, 27 the prayer at home, right? So I'm going to pray Isha 27 times. Mm, no. That was his ijtihad. That was his independent reasoning. His reasoning, yeah. And the Prophet mentioned if a scholar gets it right, he gets two rewards. If he gets it wrong, he gets, mm. he gets one. He still gets a reward because he's a scholar. Mm. But he did that. So he read 27 because he was like, I missed Isha, so I'm going to pray yeah. Isha 27 it times. It shows how much importance he put on that, that right reward, yeah. but then look when he went to sleep he saw a dream in the dream he saw that the people who had prayed Isha in the masjid they were riding on horses proper bred horses mm. and him even with the 27 Isha's he prayed at home was just walking on the sand no, it's to show you the difference mm. between Praying in the masjid. Like even if you was to pray that prayer tw- twenty seven yeah, times yeah. with not that, still not the same. It's not, it's not the same. Yeah. 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 Like the hadith. Well, like this hadith bewilders me every time. Every time it bewilders me. Mm. Sunnah be Dawood. The Prophet said, uh, "Whoever leaves his house, he's got wudu, and he goes for one of the obligatory salahs for salah maktub, an obligatory prayer. He gets the reward of Hajj." Mm-hmm. This is just for walking to the masjid. No. I can just to walk to the masjid, you get the reward for Hajj. What about the salah itself? It's been a pleasure having you on the podcast. A lot of gems, a lot of benefits. I'm sure the people have benefited also. And uh, yeah, we'll, wrap, we'll wrap it up there because, as I said, you know, we're trying to keep the episodes between 20 to 30 minutes. Because obviously it's the How long did we get on this one? 25. Really? It felt like about 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> no, 25. 25. Yeah. Uh, so. Alhamdulillah. And, uh, Before I, I was going to say, do you have any any words you want to share with the brothers? Maybe, mm. maybe like some 
some some some re- brothers that maybe got reverted or yeah. any brothers that maybe still not practicing on the roads or still doing um, what they used to just yeah for sure man um something i've been pondering over quite a lot recently is just the concept of moving forward like you know if you're on a bicycle for example the momentum you you're you're moving forward and you're building momentum but if you just stopped obviously without like putting your feet down or something, you're going to fall. Mm. You know what I mean? So the way I, I kind of see like my journey and my iman, and it might be the same for a lot of people, is the a really important thing is to keep moving forward. Progressive. Don't try and feel like, don't feel like, okay, my iman is in a great place right now. I can, you can't rest there. It will go. Like you can build two years of a man and you, that, you can lose that in two weeks. Mm. I've seen it happen. Do you know what I mean? I've seen it happen. You can lose it in two months. And, but the trick is, not a trick, but an important thing is to just keep going forward. Even if you just learn a little bit a day, a little bit, there's so much, like, you know, set yourself some targets. Like, even, it's, it might sound silly, but you see, even to read an ayah of the Quran a day, like, that sounds like nothing, right? It sounds like a, such a small task, but imagine to somebody who hasn't picked up the Quran in years. Mm. Just an ayah of a day, something so easy, because people think, some people see practicing or you know <coughs> getting back on their dean and so, it, they feel so heavy it, it might be like a trick from shaitan or yeah. something like it just feels so heavy don't it to get up and drag yourself away from whatever it is that you're doing you know but just set yourself targets that are so easy to achieve to where shaitan can't even trick you like shaitan can't make you think an eye or a day is long There's and, that's, no and that's the thing like you said it literally is a trick of shaitan because mm. that one ayah the prophet said every letter you recite you get 10 rewards no and if a person struggles to read, he gets mm. double. No. And we know that outside Ramadan, the deeds are multiplied up to 10, mm. from 10 to 700. Mm-hmm. So I can read one letter from the Quran and I get, and I get 70 rewards for it, yeah. up to 700. In Ramadan, it's even more. Mm-hmm. And the Hadith Prophet said that the most beloved actions to Allah are the consistent ones. Yeah, consistent. Even if it's small. The Prophet even, in qalb, even if it's small. Mm. Like for a person to read one juz of the Quran today mm. and then not read anything for a week and then come back and read two Jews and not read anything and then come back and read half is not as good as for a person to literally just read one ayah every one day. Ayah day. One ayah every day because it's consistent, it's better. No, something that's small and simple. No. And I just think with those small, simple tasks, you know, nobody can tell you it's hard, you know. When you're, you know, when sometimes you're dragging yourself to get up and you might be living a certain way and it's hard for you. You can't even tell yourself that's difficult. Like you, you have to laugh. If you, <laughs> if Shaitan tries to trick you, you can just laugh that off and say, "Come on, it's an ayah." Read it. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? So just small, 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 little by little, but just keep moving forward. Even if you think you're doing well, keep moving forward and don't think you can rest on your laurels because you're backtrack. Barakallahu man. Barakallahu fiik. Barakallahu fiik. Thank you for having me, brothers. Uh, uh, I hope you guys are benefiting from your Ramadan. And uh, as mentioned, you know, one of the reasons why we do this podcast is to try and fundraise. Uh, for our studio, for our da'wah, so if you're able to donate, the link will be in the description for the GoFundMe page. Um, and uh, if you'd like to come Umrah with us, as you know, Brother Muhammad keep Umrah with us also. And the telephone number to contact will also be in the description. You can message them on WhatsApp, and inshallah, uh, they'll send you more details. But we'll leave it there, inshallah. See you guys on the next episode of Ramadan with the Mandem. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace. Your faith. Please don't let me leave, this dunya cut me deep, please don't let me bleed, how? Many duas that I forget to read, I tried to pass the blame but it's left with me, I was a MC on an MP3, I felt empty but they envied me, I seek refuge like a refugee, I all the belay him in a shaitan of a gene, I asked Allah to protect me from sins, next minute I was chilling with a stud Yasin, I asked Allah to correct my niya, next minute I was reasoning with Abu Taymiya, yo faith, I'll never leave you again. I know I promised way before, but that was way back then. Yo, faith, I couldn't do it without you. I gotta practice what I preach when I tell them about you. That's it. <laughs> That's it.